Good evening. A government-appointed group on Wednesday submitted its report to the Union Ministry of Environment and Forests limiting only 37% of the Western Ghats as an ecologically sensitive area or ESA. The 10-member high-level working group led by Planning Commission member K. K. Sturirangan was co constituted to advise the Centre on the Recommendations of the Western Ghats Ecology Expert Panel headed by environmentalist Madhav Gadgil. The Gadgil panel had recommended that the entire stretch of the Western Ghats be declared an ESA or ecologically sensitive area. The Kasturirangan panel seems to have moved away from the Gadgil report on the grounds that environmentally sound development cannot preclude livelihood and economic options. Kasturirangan has recommended that only 37% of the biodiversity-rich Western Ghats, or about 60,000 square kilometers of the total 1,54,000 kilometers square kilometers, be notified as ESAs. Uh, the Kusturirangan panel has uh, recommended that a blanket ban on mining, quarrying, sand mining, setting up thermal power projects, townships and area development projects in that 60,000 square kilometer area along with a cautious approach to setting up hydropower units. Some environmental activists have dubbed the new report a diluted version of that Gardgill's uh, panel report. Uh, the report classifies the remaining 41% of the area as natural landscape, of which 37% is biologically rich, containing protected areas, world heritage sites, tiger and elephant corridors as well. Madhav Gadgil, on his part, meanwhile, has come down heavily on the panel review committee chairman K. Kasturi Rangan for presenting his report to the government without even discussing the matter with the Gadgil panel. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight on The Big Picture, we discuss the two reports and we ask our panelists whether there is any way we can balance our ecological concerns and our developmental needs. Is it even possible to achieve both side by side? And joining me tonight will be Sunita Narayan in just a bit, who heads the Centre for Science and Environment. Professor C.K. Vashni is in the studio. He is the former Dean of Environmental Sciences at JNU. Also, Chetan Chauhan joins me in the studio. Chetan is a senior journalist with the Hindustan Times. Um, welcome, all of you, to the big picture. I'd like to start with Chetan, if I could. Chetan, first thoughts on the Kasturi Rangan report. Madhav Gadgil is extremely unhappy with the panel, uh, as well as with the government. Is his anger justified at all? Uh, <coughs> no, Madhav's... Uh Anger may be justified, uh, though even though the committee members spoke with him on the final recommendations of the report, I think, I don't think that the committee members spoke with him. So it may be justified, but I have a different view on his uh, panel, um, Gardil's panel recommendations. He had taken an extreme view. Uh, nowhere in the world the entire stretch of about 1,60,000 square kilometers can be declared a ESA. There has to be, uh, 5 crore people live within that area. So there has to be some sort of a balance between protecting environment and uh, <coughs> uh, going for development. Yeah. Right. Uh, so <coughs> this the Kasturangan panel has come with some sort of a balance, but whether it's adequate or not, time will tell. And, and I think that they have diluted uh, the Gardgil committee uh, recommendations. So you're saying they have diluted? They've moved away from his report. If you, no, it was extreme view. If you see what they have said, there's a different devolution. There, there cannot be another term to describe it. Right. Uh, Professor Vashni, uh, before I go to Sunita Narayan, I, I, I'll uh, come to you first. Uh, Chetan thinks that there is a dilution, yes, but the Gardgil report to start with was quite extreme. Do you share that view? I think I will not like to say it's a dilution. I will say that a, a trade-off has been, a trade-off has been, what we see is a trade-off. Mm. Because the development is an essential aspect. Mm. And if we see the million and development goal, then one of the goals is to reduce poverty and things of that kind. And then finally, there are many others with respect to the health, with respect to the water. And then the last one is about the sustainable development. So sustainable development is not something which is an absolute conservation and nothing else. Mm. It is a something in which you have to have a kind of a balancing view in which the trade-off becomes very, very important. Right. Now, people are already living there. and we say that everything is frozen, then I think we are really in some sense saying that their future and their developmental aspirations are absolutely liquidated. Mm. And I think that is not possible in the situation where population pressures are there and people are hoping to get better livelihood because uh, and everybody has a right to have that kind of an aspiration. So, but at the same time, it is also important that uh, there is, uh, I am not quite uh, certain because I have not seen the report in detail, that what is the rationale of 37%? Mm -hmm. I mean, why it is not about 40% uh, or 30%? So what made them come to that particular? That level? particular, that I am not quite clear. But that is very certain that this absolute view 
has now been taken, which is a little more pragmatic right. and looks to be more practical. So let's ask them. But at okay. the same time, is 37% adequate or it should be a little more? I do not know what the reasons are. Let's ask that. Sunil Narayan. Yes. He, she helped out with the commission's findings. Sunil Narayan, many thanks for joining us on The Big Picture. You were part of the working group, also helped out the Kasturi Rangan panel with the final report. Uh, how do you respond to the criticism that's coming uh, uh, your way, saying that you've diluted the, the findings of the Gadgil uh, report and also that this is not the right approach? And also, uh, Mr. Vash, Professor Vashni's question, why 37%? What made you choose that? that particular number yeah yeah now firstly let's understand that madhav is a um, is you know is each one of our guru he's certainly my guru and so therefore it would hurt me tremendously if somebody said that i had either diluted his report or that i had gone or that we had gone against what he's saying i think the entire approach of the panel and i was a member of the high level committee was to find a way to move ahead with what Professor Gardgill had proposed. Professor Gardgill had proposed that there are large parts of the Western Ghat which are biologically diverse and need to be protected. Now, he used a satellite imagery at um, 9 kilometers because that is what he had access to to determine what is biologically diverse. We had the uh, privilege of working with Dr. Kasturi Rangar and therefore with ISRO and therefore we were able to get down to meter level to be able to actually see what is the biologically diverse area. And I think our message is even more frightening. I mean the point that Professor Vashne asked is something that we all need to be concerned about. The message of the, guy, of the high level group is that only 37% of the Western Ghats remains as a natural landscape which is biologically diverse. And what we have to do today is to make sure that that 37% does not become 36%. And that is, where, that is why we have proposed a no development zone there. But we have made a distinction between the cultural landscape, where people live, where there is agriculture, where there are plantations, where there are settlements, to say that we cannot ask for those areas to be turned into natural habitat today. Right. But if we incentivize the right growth, we may be able to get growth there, but also sustainable uh, uh, development. Right. Fair enough, fair and enough. And that, I think, has to be the way ahead. Fair enough, fair enough. I want to go back to Professor Vashni now. now some activists, Professor Vashni, say that a gradation of, they want a gradation of zones. Uh, they also say a more nuanced approach towards uh, um, to eco-sensitive zones is needed. Uh, some people say that uh, the Kasturi Rangan panel seems to have gone back uh, to the mindset of carving out uh, certain protected areas rather than keeping the whole of ecosystem in mind. Would you agree with that? Do you think that's a fair criticism? You see that... Uh at the face of it, it is very difficult to really justify a criticism or otherwise. Mm. But fact of the matter is that 37% what is remaining, if that is to be frozen, we do not know in what shape this 37% 30 is distributed. What is more important is that wherever there are breakages, because this 37%, if it is connected, well connected, then I think the chances of biodiversity to really flourish hmm. if we freeze that are far greater. So I think these are the matters of detail hmm. which perhaps I don't have an access to but hmm. I do not know whether this thing has been taken into which we call as corridor hmm. has been created over a long area so that when the climate change occurs which is a reality, mm. then I think this kind of a corridoring that is connecting a large area, though it may be not entire, but still, so that helps the species to adapt much better. And I think these are the kind of thing which I am sure that committee members must have looked at. And I think uh, what Sunita has said about 37% is fine. But the question is that always in a biology and ecology, there is a boundary effect, which means that whatever is there, along with this, you should also keep some more area mm. so that the remaining part remains intact. We'll take a small break, Professor Vashni. I want to come back to Chitan uh, Chauhan and ask you about the implementation. Uh, people say, and of course Sunita will agree with me, that this report has been made more implementable. But that's after the break. We'll take a small break right now. We'll come back with those comments on the big picture. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned.
Welcome back to the big picture. We, of course, are discussing the K. Kasturangan Working Group panel that gave its final report on the Madhav Gargil Committee uh, on the Western Ghats and the ecologically sensitive areas that uh, the Gargil Committee had, of course, come up with. Uh, Chetan Chauhan, uh, the high working, the high level working group, the, the, the panel members say that this particular report, the Kasturi Rangan uh, report, is now actually implementable. Uh, government officials seem to agree and they, 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 they seem to think that uh, if we implement this particular report and the recommendations in this particular report, uh, there'll be less opposition from states. Uh, your thoughts on that? Uh, <clears throat> I don't think so. There'll be a lot of opposition because within the ESA, a number of hydro <clears throat> hydro water uh, projects are coming up and mm. uh, other projects are also coming up. There will be a lot of opposition from states. I think uh, Kerala has uh, initially mm. given some sort of reaction opposing some of the recommendations. Second, on the 37% ESA, I have real doubts because if you consider about 650 uh, protected areas in India, mm. every protected area has have about 10 kilometers wide ESA. Mm. But you will see everywhere, in all, most of the protected areas, there are huge violations of ESA. Mm. The Environment Ministry or the State Environment Departments are not able to take any actions. There are so many cases in the Supreme Court or High Courts for violations of ESA norms. Mm. Mm. So how will the government ensure that even in the 37% area, the norms or the recommendations of the committees are implemented? Right. The Environment Ministry doesn't have the wherewithal to implement the recommendations. Mm. And I don't think the state governments will be willing with a huge industrial lobby to implement these recommendations. Uh, Surita Narayan, answer that question. Uh, you, you, you have claimed in newspapers as well today, I read those, uh, that yeah. this is the actually implementable report. Uh, some people have doubts about that. Uh, clear those doubts if you can. No, no, absolutely. I agree with Chetan completely. Let's be very clear. We are suggesting a way ahead. But I think the biggest problem that we have as environmentalists today is that we have no functioning institutional to regulate environment management in the country. And therefore, we are extremely worried about how we will implement. But why? And, and that is why, let me explain to your viewers two things that we have done. One, we have made sure that we have not created a new authority. One of the difference between the Gadgil report and the Kasuri Rangan report is that we have not suggested the creation of a centralized authority. And frankly, I argued against it because I don't believe that the answer for the future is that you create a new institution because each institution becomes more toothless and more incapable of actually governing change. What I believe we need to do, and that is what we have asked for, is two terms. One, straight, please fix the existing <coughs> institutions, strengthen the pollution control boards, strengthen oversight. We need data in the public domain. And two, I think today's Vedanta judgment of the Supreme Court is what we need to welcome because more we create situations in which local people can take decisions, something we have said in the Kasturi Rangan report, if they can decide, then that is the way ahead. So I totally agree with Chetan, but I think the Kasturi Rangan report only tries to say, let us find simpler ways to implement, which is why we didn't take the sectoral approach that you talked about earlier. We didn't take the gradation approach, which is difficult to manage. We took a simple approach to say, no thermal power, no mining in ESA. Right. Point we taken, ma'am. haven't ma mandated many things. Point taken, ma'am. One very, very small uh, follow-up <laughs> there. Uh, you heard what Chetan said about industrial lobby. Do you, do you expect uh, or do you, uh, do you uh, envisage an opposition uh, by industries lo industry lobbies even if these, these uh, so-called more sensible uh, recommendations are tried to be, uh, you know, tried to, um, the state side to implement it? Listen, if there's no opposition from industry, then we are clearly doing something wrong. <laughs> right, right. So I, I think I think we'll take that point. I'll go back to <laughs> Professor Vashti right now. Uh, you heard what Sunita said. Do you, do you think that makes sense uh, at all? It's The Kasturi Rangan report doesn't seem to dilute it, but they've just suggested ways of a more sensible, more pragmatic approach. No, this is what I said in the first place, mm. that it is not the dilution in mm. that sense, but it is taking a more Maybe pragmatic moving towards view. Maybe the center. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. So this, this is what it is. Because it is not possible under the situations in mm. which we are, mm. in terms of demography and in terms of the state of the 
situation as it obtained on the ground to really freeze the area as has been suggested earlier. So I think uh, there has to be and I think uh, the reasons have been explained that why it is 37 percent mm -hmm. and that is fine enough good but the only point again remains which mm -hmm. I am uh, only trying to repeat and reinforce mm -hmm. that implementation is very very important. Mm -hmm. I mean this is again a very important uh, objective but mm -hmm. then this objective can only be achieved and operationalized in the way that it has been imagined provided we have got a right setup or the existing setup which really takes care of this asset. Let me go back to an earlier question I, I put to Chetan. I want to put the same question to you. Uh, Mr. Gardgill is not very happy right now. Madhav Gardgill has come down very hard on the government as well. He has, uh, he's in, he says he's shocked that the government didn't share the remote sensing data with the Gardgill panel when they were trying to do it. And because Dr. Kasturi Rangan has of course, uh, uh, you know, influence or, or his contacts in, the, in ISRO, uh, they got that particular uh, data as well. Gardgill has also said it's really shocking that the Kasturi Rangan report, uh, the panel didn't even try to consult the Gargill committee. Do you think they, they should have at least tried to apprise uh, the Gargill, Gargill committee of what they were doing? If not, maybe consult them. I think I will. No, no, but that's end. not right. I'll come back to you, ma'am. I'll come back to you. Right. I'll come back to you, ma'am. I'll come back to you. I mean, yeah. I mean, just be factually I'll come back to you, correct. Let, let okay. Professor, let, let Professor Vashni answer the question. I'll come back to you, ma'am. Yes. No, if the Gargill committee and the Gargill committee was not uh, having an access to that kind of. Uh, remote sensing data, then I think that it is something. But here I would like to say a general experience of the people and the working scientists, that most of the time the data is really not available hmm. and it is uh, for various reasons. I mean, there is no one reason for various reasons, it is just not available. But uh, this is uh, very true that uh, Gardgill has a reason to say that why this data was not available to them because right. if he could get for a small portion, he, he was almost too keen to get for the entire set. Right. But the point is that this is very important. This is nothing to do with the report per se, but right. I am making this a general observation. Right. This right. is with respect to many other kind of data right. that the government collects and it is available in various files and various right. Let's go back to Sridhar Narayan. Ma'am, you had a point. Correct my factual mistake if I made some. Yeah, yeah, just I think it's a very, um, I'm, I'm actually very sad about it because I think instead of talking about whether we met Dr. Gardgill, which we did, actually Dr. Kasturi Rangan flew down to Pune to meet Professor Gardgill and it's all documented in the report. Right. I think we should rise above it. I think it's not a question of whether we met one or another. I think the report, let's, let's be very clear for the first time, the report has been put in the public domain as it was released to government. It is now available for discussion, for dissent, for dialogue. And I don't think that we should deteriorate down to personal comments. Right. I think we should be discussing the faults in the report. We should be discussing what has the report done right, what has the report done wrong. It is in the public domain. Professor, like, uh, uh, Professor Vashne can download the report, he can read it right, and right. we can have a sensible dialogue about how to move ahead. Right, that has to be the purpose in this country, not trying to pull each other down. I absolutely agree okay? with you ma'am, I absolutely agree with you. We shouldn't uh, talk about personal comments or agendas and that's exactly what we are going to do after this break. We are going to try and see what the report has actually come out with and in, in the sense, the, the bigger picture we will see, the bigger question of course is can India, can the country as a whole ba maintain a balance between ecological concerns on one hand and developmental needs on the other? That's after the break. Don't go anywhere. Keep watching The Big Picture. Welcome back to The Big Picture. Chetan Chauhan, uh, in the beginning I mentioned, of course, I'll go back to that question before we end the show. But before that, the Kasturi Rangan panel report is not binding on the government. It's, it's a suggestive report. Uh, the, it can be either rejected or partially uh, accepted or partially rejected, what have you. But do we agree, you and I, do we, do we agree there is more need for more debates and consultation? I think that's what Sunita is saying also. There needs to be a, a further debate on this. I think on the Western Ghat issues, hmm. there have been a lot of debate. Hmm. For the last three and four years, there has been debate and debate on the Western Ghat issues. I think it's now, now the time to act. The, to act. Mm. The central ministry, the environment ministry, in consultation with the state governments, should notify whatever they want to notify. Whether it's 37 percent, 25 percent, 50 percent, they should notify and implement it. Mm. And one of the key recommendations uh, which even Sinta didn't mention is that whatever money from the industries which come up in that area should be flowed back to the people who are living there right. for their development. Right. Whether it can happen 
or not yes. is a big question. Mm. Yes. They have also uh, spoken about setting up a uh, fund under Planning Commission for Western Guards mm. to protect this ecology. Mm. I think these are the moves which the government should implement immediately so that at least we can so show something on the ground that the government is serious about saving ecology. Point taken. Before I come to Sujit and Ryan, ma'am, I'll come to you for last comments. Before I do that, I want to go to Professor Vashni and ask him this. Sir, is there a way, the bigger question that we're talking about, is there a way that we can balance our developmental needs and our ecological concerns? Because look at the way uh, even activists are divided over these two reports, uh, over the Western Guards. It looks like a Herculean task to actually balance both. Is that even possible? No, I think... Uh one has to take a very uh, pragmatic view in this matter. A balanced approach. Uh, but is that possible? I think it is possible. Mm. Why it is not possible? Mm. Because uh, we know that, that Western Ghat is very heavily populated in pockets wherever they are. But uh, nothing can be done to reverse the situation. So we have to accept it. And there is no other way but to accept it. And also give them a right to develop. Mm. And also for the region to develop. But the only question is that in this development, it should not be rapacious development, mm. but it has to be a more responsible development. And I think the question of 37%, 38% is a matter of detail. Mm. But fact of the matter is that it is not possible to declare entire area as ecological sensitive area under, and I think it is never possible even elsewhere. What is more important is that within that, what are those different type of ecosystem, everything, for example, the origin of rivers and so on, they are very important hmm. points and all these habitats are really protected and taken care of which a satellite imagery should be able to help us to identify very right. clearly right. and if we do that then I think it is possible to accommodate a lot of developmental activity and it is good that some fund can be created but let me also say that there are many other areas in the country which are equally important it's not just the western uh, it's not yeah. just the western guard so I think let us not entirely focus and pour all our energy on the western guard but I think there are many other areas and places which are equally important and which are of equal ecological value which also need to be and they are also are in just God's mercy. Because right, right. Let me go. We can, we can Absolutely. start with Western Ghats. We can start with that. Western Ghats. <laughs> if, not, if not all the ecologically important places in the country, right. we can start with Western Ghats. Right. Let me put the same question to Sunil Narayan. Is there a way a balance can be achieved? Because India is at a crossroads right now. India is fast developing. We have developmental needs. Do you think we can achieve a balance between uh, uh, the, the both? Ecological concerns on one hand and developmental needs on the other. You know, we have no choice. We have to. I mean, the fact is, environment is not a luxury. Environment is about survival. If you destroy the Western Ghats, you're destroying the foundation on which all life subsists. So I don't think anymore India has uh, um, uh, the luxury of saying we can make choices between the two. I think the question is, how do we move ahead? And what we have done in this report, report is to provide a framework. Good, bad, evil, it's a framework. The framework says very clearly that there are parts of the Western Ghats which are biologically very diverse, where we would like to have a prohibitory regime where no development will be allowed. And in the remaining part of the Western Ghats, where we accept that there have been human-made changes that people live, we would like to incentivize good green growth. Hmm. I mean, I still believe that it is not only growth through manufacturing and through toxic polluting industry, which is good growth. We could have plantation based organic agriculture, which is also good growth. So I think the issue is how to move ahead. And I really agree with Chetan to say the time to stop debating, discussing and tearing everything apart is over. We can keep doing that in the academic world, but here is an opportunity where we should take, we should grasp to say, let's move ahead. Maybe it's not the final answer, but it is the best answer for today, and it gives us a possible way in which we can actually protect right. biodiversity and yet build a green economy. Sunita, I have about 30 more seconds. One follow-up question. You remember Chetan said before, uh, he doesn't think hmm. that the Environment Ministry has the wherewithal to actually implement these reports. What do you think? Very briefly, 30 seconds. Yeah. No, absolutely. But that is what we have to fix. We have to make sure that we can fix the regulatory system of India. And without that, let's be very clear, we can keep having TV debates. These are just not going to work. 
We need to make sure that we have men on the ground, we have machines on the ground who can tell us very clear that there are violations and the polluters go behind bars. Right, right. A point taken, Sri Narayan, I, although I do disagree slightly with the TV debates bit, we do help in our own little way what we can. We, we do what we can. Um, uh, <laughs> you do, absolutely you do. <laughs> many thanks, absolutely many you thanks, do. Many thanks, Sunita Narayan, for joining <laughs> us on The Big Picture. Chetan Chauhan, many thanks Thank for joining you. us. Thanks Professor C.K. Vashni as well. Uh, you heard the debate. Uh, I really don't want to add much, but yes, uh, there seems to be a consensus that the time to act is now. The Kasturi Rangan report perhaps is a beginning. It's a suggestive report. It has a suggestions in it, but more debate perhaps could be beneficial as well. Uh, that's all the time we have on The Big Picture today. Athar Khan saying goodbye, goodnight, and thank you for watching.